Amen. Well, you have been blessed with a lot of music declaring that Jesus saved, right? And, and He's worthy. We have heard the song says, Worthy is the Lamb. If you were here last Friday, we had a service, and uh, we call it Good Friday. And uh, some of the questions arise is, why do we call it Good Friday when the Lord Jesus Christ is on the grave? Well, of course, we call it Good Friday because we look forward to this day. Amen? This day is the resurrection day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today I'd like to share with you a um, few verses from the book of Luke as he ended his letter in chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 8 in the New King James Version. This is how the Word of God, through Luke, declares to us. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they are greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. But he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And in verse 8 it says, And they remembered his words. Let's bow our heads as we look to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Today we are being reminded once again of what you have done on the cross. You gave your life for all people on this earth. And when you died on the cross, you died for all. And you were buried. And the third day, you rose from the dead. You declared your power that you are God. That death could not hold you. And that's why a lot of people today are in churches celebrating and commemorating your resurrection. But Lord God, if, if you are not in the hearts of people who celebrate this day, we call it Easter, we call it Resurrection Sunday. If you are not in their hearts, there is no message, there is no reason for their attending the church. So Lord God, today, I ask that if anyone who's here today who have not made the decision to trust you, I pray that you will speak to the hearts even right now. And for those of us, Lord God, who have been believers and have put our trust in you and have been cold in our faith, Lord God, I pray that you would revive us today, that you would rekindle the fire the ones burn in our hearts so that today we're going to renew our commitment to you and live for you faithfully. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. So again, welcome to ICF. And uh, if you are here for the first time, we welcome you and we thank you for your presence. We are honored that you're here and we would like to welcome you today right after the service. We're going to have fellowship downstairs. We will have some lunch and food. And the children are excited today because at 1 o'clock, they're going to be outdoors. They're going to be out there in the backyard uh, going to hunt for candies covered by plastic eggs. <laughs> so, well, before that, we have to focus on the Word of God right now. So, our text today talks about women. And, and Luke didn't name them. He, was, he, he just said, um, uh, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they. So who are they? And then he said, um, 
and certain other women with them. Now, if you go to the book of Mark, in chapter 15, verses, verse 47, this is what Mark wrote. He said, And Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Joseph, not Jesus, Joseph, observed where he was laid. So this answered the question, who were the women that Luke described in Luke chapter 24, verse 1. This morning, we're here gathered, we're here trying to refresh and commemorate what happened that day. And going back to that situation, we can picture Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph. They were there anticipating that the Lord Jesus Christ is still in the tomb. So the story goes that when they arrive, there's no one there. And as we have read in our scripture today, they were perplexed, they were puzzled, and then all of a sudden two angels appeared, men with uh, shiny clothing, and then they, they perceived that these guys are angels, and they bow down, and, and the angel said to them, He is not here. Why do you seek the living among the dead? There are so many ways that we can commemorate or that we can remember what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. We can go back to that moment that I just described. The stages of that morning when we saw them wonder how, how the Lord Jesus Christ wasn't there. And then, and then all of a sudden, things settle and said, oh, okay, now we, are, well, now we remember. After the angels told them, remember, Jesus told them, remember, he told you. And then the women said, okay, now we remember. And then we could also trace the, the impact of such a day with the rest of the disciples when they saw the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of those guys couldn't believe that he is alive and he said, I will not believe until I touch his wounds and the guy, Thomas, had a surprise when the Lord Jesus Christ showed up. And there are many ways and many more ways we could remember this Resurrection Sunday's amazing wonders and the truth. It is not just uh, something that happened that people were celebrating. It is the truth. And the reason why people go to church today, not only here at ICF, but in all the churches today, there are so many people that go to church because it's Easter Sunday. So again, may I ask, for those of you who came for the first time and for those of you who have been not in the church for a long time, why are you in church today? Of course, we're saying we celebrate Easter. But I'm, I'm praying that today when you go out of this place, you will have a new perspective of what Easter or what Resurrection Day is really all about. So today, we're going to look at something else. We're going to focus on three very important reminders that Jesus did or said while he was still on earth. Those are the words of the angels when the angels said, remember. While, why did the angels tell them to remember? Uh, because we're forgetful people, right? Even Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, they forgot. And their focus that morning is, our Lord is dead. And they were there to prepare his body and, and to wrap him and to put perfume. But then they said, in, uh, it says in verse 8, now they remember. So the first thing I'd like to share with you this morning is that we need to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say in verse 7 of Luke chapter 24? And the angel said, saying, the son, of man, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. This is the words of Jesus while he was still walking on earth with his disciples. He kept telling them that the son of man will be delivered into the hands of sinful men and will be crucified, but on the third day will rise again. Jesus even mentioned a temple, that the temple will be broken down, and he said, in three days, it will be rebuilt. So Jesus is trying to remind them of his very words. 
when the Lord Jesus Christ said, On the third day, I will rise again. And indeed, he rose from the dead. And that settled with these women. And then in other books from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, after this encounter with the angels, they ran back to where the disciples were and told them excitedly. And so the words that God has for us today is for us to remember. We're here today not just to celebrate Easter or to resur or Resurrection Sunday, but we're here to be reminded of how precious His life was. You know, in reality, the Lord Jesus Christ could just have decided, uh, I'm just going to stay in heaven. I'm not going to spend my time or my love or my energy reaching out to these sinful men because they don't want me anyway. I remember when I was still a non-believer, I go to church, I read, I read verses of the Bible, I know a lot of hymns, but I don't have Jesus in my heart. I don't want Jesus in my heart because I want to have my own way. I still want to enjoy life. I said, I'm so young, maybe I will go to church, maybe I will really change my ways when I am older so that you know, I have enjoyed everything that I want to enjoy. But never have I imagined that I will be saved because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So remember Christ's words. And then the Lord Jesus Christ also told us to remember his offer. Now, going back to chapter 23 of the book of Luke, we need to remember the offer that Jesus gave while he was hanging on the cross. When Jesus said in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Again, during Friday, when we uh, remember the seven words that the Lord Jesus Christ said, we, we, we read this. We meditate on this. But then when Jesus said this, he were extending, he were, he's offering complete forgiveness. When Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Did you know that we are included in that prayer that Jesus prayed? It's not only the people that are there present during the time. He said that because he knew that every person that will be born will need to ask for forgiveness and need his forgiveness. So going back to where it is at present during the time, to both the soldiers who hear or who heard the Lord and the two criminals on both sides of the Lord Jesus Christ, it was a cry of a Savior that He alone can offer. He alone can offer that kind of forgiveness. Full and complete forgiveness. Now when I forgive, when you forgive, when you are offended, sometimes you forgive partially, just partial. And sometimes you forgive conditionally, right? Now if you do well, I will forgive you. Or if you are really sincere in your confession, then I will forgive you. But Jesus said, when I forgave, it's complete. There's no reservation. There's no partial. It's complete forgiveness. And again, to those criminals and soldiers surrounding him who were sinners, when Jesus uttered those words, he said, Father, don't hold this crime of mocking me, the thief, the thief, 